Hello everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, just going to wait a little bit because usually it takes a little bit of time for people to get in here. And there was a fair few that signed up, so today it's uh, it should be a relatively interesting uh, update given so much is happening or nearly every pair has got something in play uh, and so there is a, a fair bit to talk about but we're going to be targeting uh, mostly uh, the trade situation and uh, what's been happening uh, with some of the bigger pairs uh, in reaction to that and some of the, the, the new themes uh, that you can expect to be dealt with uh, not just uh, tonight when the Trump meets with uh, the EU uh, at the White House there but also um, tomorrow with the ECB uh, and then later on in August when we do have rate hikes uh, potentials from uh, the Bank of England uh, and also we do have another uh, FOMC meeting we might get a little bit of clarity there uh, coming up soon on, on how many times they're going to raise rates this year and the US dollar strength in general is going to be a, a bit of a topic that we do talk about tonight on that note we better bring up a dollar index chart shows all the action All right, so we'll start, uh, start about five, uh, five past. See if some of you are the same uh, came last, uh, last month. So we do this once a month and we uh, have a little bit of evolving idea about what's happening in, in trades in general uh, that we get looking at. The only trade I have open at the moment is a long uh, DAX trade and it's uh, doing quite nicely, but it might be time given that the, the trade discussions tonight are, are so pivotal. Might be time to take a little bit of profit here. Although that chart does suggest that we have a little bit of time. In situations like this, um, it's actually, you, you may not need to, uh, to, to actually put in a, a take profit per, per se. What you might want to do is put uh, your entry uh, you may want to uh, put your entry as uh, stop to entry and uh, in, that's uh, the sort of uh, you know if you if you do put your trade uh, stop up here for me I'm not going to put my stop to entry uh, I'll let it run through a little bit further than that because I do think that there'll be something positive tonight but um, something I'll keep an eye on as well it will happen during sleep and I'm not really risking too much on this trade it's a very small trade Uh, Lana, just uh, a long DAX trade I was in from a couple of days ago. Uh, you should be able to see the screen that I'm uh, I'm showing here, and that is, uh, you know, the entry point was just on the pullback, and uh, the market made a new high. Uh, it's not exactly a clear trade; it's just a bit of an uptrend trade. Uh, there's a lot going on in the next 24 hours. ECB is generally supportive of the DAX. Um, it's just getting past the, the bit of the issue tonight, uh, which is Trump and, and EU. Um, look, given that his, his tough stance on, on many of the allies that he does negotiate with, you may be uh, inclined to think that this is going to be one of those uh, aggressive uh, sort of 
meetings, but given the uh, the size of the trade they're talking about and the fact that the allies, uh, it should probably be a little bit more amicable, uh, you'd think. But uh, you never know with Trump, it, it might not go as well as his, he hopes and you might not get anything out of it. Uh, but if he does get anything, he'll be, you know, uh, definitely highlighting that. So some of the issues though is, um, you know, like the, one of the things he said is like, well, why don't we just drop tariffs on each other uh, on, on, when it comes to cars? And that would be great, uh, but that's definitely not allowed by the rules of the uh, WTO. Okay, so if you were to drop something like this, it would um, it, it sort of breaks the rules when it comes to to how global trade is done. Uh, you need to have a free trade agreement completely, uh, not just on a particular sector. Um, and so that sort of unilateral deal uh, has to be more of a, a global uh, free trade agreement in cars with uh, up to around 90% of all the manufacturers involved if you do want to get that next step higher. And that would have to include China as well as Japan. And China is a big sticking point there. So you can't really just go and say, hey, you drop your tariffs, we'll drop our tariffs. That's just not uh, a practical uh, application if you're going to uh, go through that WTO uh, rules. But, um, you know, there is, there is potentially uh, other ways they can get around this uh, if they do looking at, at making some sort of uh, uh, some sort of agreement with with uh, Europe in, in particular, something more towards a free trade agreement. Uh, if that was to be the groundwork, then you would definitely see a nice reaction in the stock market. In terms of a negative reaction, if it, there's no, no uh, concrete uh, steps made, or there is more aggressive rhetoric from Trump regarding threats of uh, tariffs on uh, on, on European imports. And, you know, this is a thing as well, like, uh, you know, what these tariffs that US has been doing are also outside of their WTO rules. You know, there's no, you know, there's no real proposal there. Uh, the justifications on national security grounds are fairly flimsy. And it's, uh, you know, still potentially you can make the argument, but uh, when it comes to cars, it's much harder to say that that's a national security requirement. And so US is already uh, been in the rules and the US has, has a bit of a, a bad relationship with the WTO right now and in terms of its uh, it, it what it believes the WTO has been doing for the last 20 years so don't think that all the rules apply it's just uh, you know when you're talking about EU and, and and US making some sort of well Germany in particular you know sort of making some sort of deal with the US it's just not that practical um, there's bigger concerns when it comes to uh, agreements there but we uh, they don't underestimate what I'm trying to say here is don't underestimate the potential for this to be a positive event rather than a negative event. The negative event uh, has already been sort of half priced in by the aggressive tweeting that Trump's done and that's very much Trump's style to go aggressive at the start and then try to make some sort of deal when they are negotiating. So the press conference afterwards uh, and that would be coming later in the US session probably around eight hours nine hours from now uh, probably is going to be more positive uh, than than you would think given uh, the, the tweets leading up to it. Yeah, and these guys, it's not China here, we're talking about Europe and US, uh, that's, that's a whole different ball game. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see exactly how it comes through. Um, but it is, uh, you know, playing long on the DAX or playing long on the Euro uh, isn't so bad. The reason why Euro is a little bit more interesting maybe than the uh, DAX in this scenario here is that in the last two days, uh, well, in the last three days, there was this nice, really uh, sharp rally from the low 116 level up to around 117.40. Uh, and then there was a pullback, a little bit of consolidation, not much happening yesterday um, and on Tuesday. Uh, but today it's, it's well, well positioned here now. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what this rally was on the back of, this is on the back of Trump tweeting about the currency manipulation by Europe. Now, that topic, when brought up tonight, could have a bigger impact on the euro. Right, that topic, when you're talking about uh, things that can drive a market move, uh, if you're talking about uh, Trump going after the ECB, and the ECB has a meeting tomorrow, remember, uh, that's something that the market has already shown that it wants to react to. And in some regards, he does make some points that are, are pretty hard to argue against regarding the, uh, the ECB keeping 
its QE a lot lower, uh, a lot longer than, than expected, and keeping the interest rates uh, lower, uh, negative still, uh, uh, till next till next year. Now that that's the part which might change tomorrow uh, in terms of the wording. Draghi uh, had a had a huge impact on the market at the last ECB meeting, and this was the last ECB meeting up here. This sell-off that you saw was over 300 pips in a in a 24-hour period, and uh, this was on the back of Draghi saying uh, they're going to end end QE, which is printing money um, in Europe, at the end at, in December. Okay, so taper it down in December, but they're not going to raise rates until late 2000, late summer or till summer 2019. Now that was a bit of a shock to the market because when you're ending QE it, and you got inflation starting to pick up, there really isn't any reason to put a, such a big uh, timeline on it and to sort of uh, give forward guidance to the market, which means you're telling it when it's going to raise rates and cut rates, uh, when you should more be open to the idea of we'll just be a little bit more uh, reactive to the data. All right, saying you're reactive to the data um, is probably what they are. They're just saying this to keep the euro lower. Because at the point when they came into that meeting, the euro was attempting to rally again, and the ECB does have a little bit of a history of trying to intervene in the euro uh, to get it down, and they've done such a good job in getting the uh, after the euro fell, they didn't want to repeat of what happened uh, back in 2017, where there was the huge rally from 107 all the way to 125. Okay, so the ECB is uh, definitely not the friend of the euro bulls, uh, but they can't escape some pressure from outside world and Trump starting to label them a currency manipulator definitely might get the uh, a little bit of reaction from them and in terms of, of the wording that they use tomorrow although Draghi does like to try and keep things cautious and uh, definitely err on the side of caution generally um, you know something a little bit loose or a little bit if the market's looking for a reason to rally and you know if there's any sort of optionality opened up by by Draghi in the sense that maybe they're going to raise rates earlier if data permits then then the euro will be off to the races again okay combining with the Trump put which is when the US dollar gets strong he gets upset um, and he's also Trump's also getting upset with the Fed the euro dollar is on a much stronger footing right now than it was the last time we spoke which was just after the uh, the huge fall and uh, you know the the market was testing 115 and it tested a couple of times after we spoke last meeting at uh, the last update and uh, now we uh, we've had a much more constructive very sideways action uh, but most importantly the, the biggest moves have been in the last three days where it started to rally yeah so you're coming into a meeting where there is there's very low expectations so there easily could be an upside surprise um, with these meetings tonight and uh, and then tomorrow, everyone expects Draghi also to be bearish, and it's going to be hard for him to be, you know, sorry, dovish, and it's going to be hard for him to be more dovish than it's currently uh, priced in by the market with a huge fall from last last time. So both of these have uh, upside risk to them uh, in the short term. Um, so they do open the door to the market, you know, having a nice uh, recovery here in the euro uh, if it, if it wants to play that way. There's also a little bit of a timing issue if if the euro is ready to go, uh, but uh, it is starting. It's definitely looking like it's preparing to to attempt a rally, and the other pairs are also behaving bullishly as that US dollar is sort of tapped out. So the the this we're looking at here is we're looking at the uh, at the pound, and the pound has been under heavy heavy pressure, very uh, very solid selling now for a few months. Um, it's a bit loose when I'm putting that in, but you know what I mean. There's a general broad trend line the the rallies have been getting lower uh, and it's coming up now to the sell zone again but in terms of how high it can go and uh, if it's going to rally with the euro then this will be a bit of a key day as well we'll be talking if it get past 133 you'll be talking uh, analysts like myself will be writing reports you know the day after saying hey well, there's been a technical break higher on the pound the downside now is being relieved and the euro would be breaking at that point uh, the uh, 118 level and it would also be in part of the same game the downside has been uh, applicated so this is a big if and you know any this is a little bit safer still this is still not too dangerous buying the euro buying the pound at these levels but if we get closer towards 118 
and it's testing those levels, then it becomes very dangerous. And if this is testing 133, it becomes very dangerous. And you do have to keep an eye on uh, any positions you do have open there. Uh, it's much easier and much safer to wait for a clean break of these pairs. You do give up your pair, you do give up a fair bit of pips if you if you get out here and get back in up here. But it's uh, and you know get out here but get back in here. You do give up 100 pips or so, but you do get a lot more information when you're managing your trades. And and just from a perspective though of how do I approach each day, uh, the king, the US dollar is not king anymore. And you've seen that uh, very easily, very very cleanly, sorry, when it comes to the Aussie dollar as well. Aussie dollar is starting to make new highs. So there's lots of negative news out and that's not affecting the the selling on the Aussie isn't being able to, uh, to be sustained. And uh, one bit of, of good news, like the China stimulus package to stabilize their, their uh, faltering economy and a little bit of confidence in the economy, you know, still running at 6.8% GDP, but, uh, you know, slowing down and, and stock market in particular crashing um, over 20% in the last six months does open the door to, uh, uh, the stimulus package does open the door to recovery in the Aussie and just general risk appetite and if you're talking about what the US dollar does not do, it does not do well when stocks are surging and everyone's happy. It's a much more related as a safe haven and that's its, uh, its bigger role um, in the past anyway and there's a lot of room for the US dollar to give up gains. Uh, we did spend a lot of time in, in uh, last year anyway, uh, a lot lower than here and so we did spend a lot of time uh, in, in early eight, 2018 um, in March down at around 80, 89. Then we had the big, you know, Euro sell-off and the big uh, pound sell-off and the big Aussie crash and, you know, everything jumped up. But the dollar index itself is, is failing at 95 multiple times. So, you know, what we have to be open here is that this is everything here you're probably noticing is, well, he seems to be anti-US dollar. Well, Look, I'm not anti-US dollar, I'm just starting to open the door to the anti-US dollar and we're playing the, the game on a day-to-day -day basis. And the day-to-day -day basis right now is that there's more and more proof that the US dollar's reached a top. Now, what happens next is we're trying to find a bottom on the US dollar. And when we find a bottom, if the, break, if the bottom breaks, all right, so if 118 breaks on the euro, 133 breaks on the, on the pound, uh, dollar index breaks below 93, then we can talk about further dollar weakness. But if these levels hold, then we're talking about range trading, and uh, range trading is still fine from a trading point of view, right? But you don't get involved selling the dollar index here. You don't get involved buying the euro here. You don't get involved um, buying the pound here. You just wait. You wait and see what happens at those levels. But this here is still relatively high in the bigger range. Here is still relatively low in the in the bigger range. Here is still got some room before you're starting to be a little dangerous. Yeah, uh, if you're buying a little late to the party like this is right now on the euro, so this is uh, the euro four hour. Um, you know, if I was buying and say, so, so I did, you know, do this buy just for. Uh, it's not really the way I would be uh, playing today because of those meetings, but just uh, in terms of this is just a practical point of view. Um, on here some reason it's uh, being a little unfriendly to me moving my stops manually I haven't seen this before one click trading's on, everything's on. I usually you can just drop and drag and drop and there'll be no issues. There's no confirmation screen. Uh, I did reinstall it today though, so we'll see. Maybe I did something wrong. Uh, but uh, when you're talking about, uh, when you're talking about, so let's just put that take profit in actually. When you're talking about setting up trades, um, you know, mostly speaking, what you want to be looking at is your stop loss to be under a previous low. If you're talking about a new potential uptrend 
and you want your take profit to be around at least double your, your stop loss. If those bare minimum conditions can't be met, uh, there's really very little reason for you to be in the trade. And if you really want to maximize your trades as well, then you'd avoid a pair which does have big news announcements um, because it does create a lot of uncertainty in, in terms of you know something new coming out that hurts it. Um, so instead of say the Euro, a safer option today would have been say the Aussie dollar on the pullback earlier today. And uh, when we got down to to one uh, to 74, if you'd entered at 74, then you could put your stop underneath the previous low, which was like 73.60. Uh, and then your stop loss is not really, really very big. And then you take profit in terms of how far the Aussie can get to uh, is, is that 75 level. So, you know, we're talking about when you enter trades, you can actually, you don't even need it that big a stop loss on a lot of these trades. Uh, it'd be surprising sometimes when you do get patterns like this, if you're buying here at the start of Europe, you can put your stop just below the, the low of the day and that's fine as well. That doesn't, um, that doesn't lead into it. But the whole idea about buying dips, if you're one of my clients and you're talking to me today, buying the dips is something that happens uh, fairly often uh, in the market and it's one of the ways to make money. And if you're talking about uh, setting up structures, you, know, you can use systems and these moving averages actually a system that does provide uh, um, entries on a four hour. And uh, you know, the surprising how often the market does continue in new trends when they do happen. Uh, just, it's always different, the pattern, um, and very rarely is it gentle and nice, right? It's, if it was so easy to make money and if it happened, you know, the euro is going to rally and say you bought yesterday and it didn't do it within a day, then it's easy enough to back off the trade idea and uh, to be already out of the trade because it, you're just impatient, you know, because you're a trader and you want to make money that day. Uh, but you'll notice a lot of the times the trade ended up going up, it just might happen two days later. Okay, so the timing of the trade and the timing of the move does not fit the time when you sit down to watch the market. You only, you know, you, you, you there's a timing uh, aspect to trading that you have to get in sync with the market's timing and know how long it takes for the market to move. Now, if you're talking about the market moving to 117.90 without having big announcements like the ECB, or the EU Trump trade talk, then that's a three day trade. You know, that's that's not a one day trade anymore. The market's not moving to that speed, especially at the in the last couple of weeks, you're not getting that level of uh, continued volatility, especially on, on when we're talking about uh, the third wave of buying, which is what this, um, this wave of buying would be. So right now, uh, you know, what, we, what we're looking here is that uh, we're looking for ways to hop on this new uh, short-term US dollar bearish vibe and uh, potentially the best way to express it. And the only reason we're looking at the Euro right now is just because it was uh, sort of a chart setup, but the, and, and everything's in focus, but every pair is gonna be very similar. The Euro is just leading it. So you could take the same analysis across to the gold and the same arguments made about dollar index bottoming can be made about gold. Um, out the German tax here can be made about gold, right? We didn't even have to look at this chart to know that it was going to look pretty aggressive in terms of bottoming. <clears throat> and so one of the things that you're looking for is multiple daily lows that are higher than the previous low, right? This is the third one. And now we're looking, uh, well, dips in the market that are, are bought back up. So dips are, you know, anything which looks pretty aggressive. Uh, this one did get out of control. The rally was about $30 and the pullback was pretty sharp too, around $20. Uh, but the fact that there was buying pretty sharply off it means the sellers are going to be less aggressive now. Yeah, this was the, this is the normal part of the trend. This is the, ooh, are sellers in control anymore? How far have we fallen? Well, hell of a long way. Hell of a long way. Did we get to 1200? No. Did everyone want to get to 1200? Yes. Does the market play nice? No, right? So, you know, all those buyers who are, are trying to get out, so all those sellers who are trying to uh, to 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 make money by take profits at 1,200 have to be watching this price action a little bit worried uh, that the gold is bottomed. So what's the next sign that the gold is bottomed? If we break the previous high, then we're gonna have a series of higher lows and higher highs. Okay, so it's only $4 away. 
and we get a bit more information. So, but if the market roll is up to here to 1240, yeah, and then you see the market roll down again to say 1230, uh, that's the buy signal. Okay, that's when you're looking at, uh, from a trading point of view, you know, you're going to be looking at the market and saying, is gold in, in a downtrend anymore? What are the reasons for this US dollar weakness? Um, and you see those fundamental reasons in the backdrop and you'll be looking to buy somewhere, you know, if we go bump, 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 bump. You know, that, that's a very common little throw. And then if this holds and then really off to the, off to the races, but looking to buy the next pullback, if we break higher here is going to be a, a good idea. Same with the, um, same with the pound to some extent off this trend line, but a bigger extent uh, from the 133 level and the Euro 118, uh, you know, looking to, to buy after it breaks these levels is, is a bit of a, uh, a strong idea um, that, that you can use in the back of your mind. Okay. Because once it gets up here, your brain's going to start telling you, this is dangerous. I don't want to be buying so high. Okay. But the, the time it takes to get to 120, it's going to be very hard. Uh, if you're not buying at 118.40, then you're definitely not going to be buying at 119. Um, you know, 119.40, and then you're going to miss all these trades. And you probably notice you do this a lot as, as a trader. You miss trades in between trends and big levels, new trends and then big levels. You wait and then, you know, the next time you trade the euro is a short at 120. And then you, you sit back, you look at your trading history and like, geez, trading's hard. All right, but you can sort of sense right now that if the euro breaks 118, that we have room to go to 120. It's not a big level. It's not a, a huge move. It's only 200 pips. It's the previous level that the market did find resistance at. Okay, and, and has it found resistance at 118 before? Many times. Okay, so it's just jumping back into this range versus jumping back into this 116, 118 range, where it's quite comfortable too. Uh, so yeah, look, following trends as they develop is probably the hardest thing to train your brain to do, but it is definitely important. Uh, you, very similar will be with the Aussie, by the time it gets to 75, your brain will be telling you to to sell, okay? My brain will be telling me to sell, right? But it's a it's a, a bit of a low probability trade and it's something that makes sense only because it's doing it for the first time. And I don't mind you selling the first time it gets to 75, but the intention of selling a, a trade at 75 is just because uh, the sellers there might, and the take profits from all the traders here, uh, might be enough to make it pull back 20, 30 pips. But you sh your intention should be to be taking 10 to 30 pips uh, on that pair, not to be turning into a trend trade too often, um, because that just doesn't happen too often. More often than not, the market picks and stays with that new direction for weeks. And the reasoning behind this new US dollar weakness is that Trump has called out uh, the Fed and called out the ECB and called out China and is complaining about US dollar strength. There's a bit of a Trump put now. And whether he has too much control over enough or not, it's a pretty good story and the market loves a good story. Yeah, that's the sort of reasoning behind a lot of these flows. And we're not talking about day one of a US dollar rally that we're, you know, we're ditching it day after. This is a very mature US dollar rally. And this is the fourth fail on the dollar index. So as a broad picture of US dollar strength and weakness, you are getting to what could be easily a reversal point. And it's not me making that up. That's a very patient point of view. Yeah. And we still got to break some levels before we can talk about the high being in uh, or range trading stopping, but it, it's pretty easy to, to get to this. This is not aggressive analysis. This is pretty passive and fairly patient. Uh, so, um, but has a, you know, from a day trading point of view, the last two updates we've been doing, we've been talking a lot about the RSIs and how to make money from a day trading uh, uh, opportunities right now. Uh, look, a lot of the time when I'm trading, I'm looking for the market. Uh, once it's moved 50 pips or more in, in a session, so usually it's a European or US session where you get 50 pip movements. You don't usually get that in, in uh, the Asian session. And some of you have already heard this, but I'll, I will go over it again. Once you get 50 pips in a session, uh, if you set up an RSI with a period seven on a 15 minute, uh, very likely that your, your trade, whatever you're in, is in an overbought territory. Okay. Now, straight off the bat, looking at the euro, we haven't moved. Uh, 
we haven't moved 50 pips, we've only moved 30. So I'm not going to be looking at this as a trade because it hasn't moved enough. Hoping the pound's gone a bit further. No, pound's not moving. Doesn't really matter. I can go back in time before uh, when I'm looking at these. It's a good thing about charting any sort of trading uh, setups that you're looking for. Uh, you're allowed to go back in time and, and sort of double check. What we're looking for here off the top of my head is, um, and we're going to switch it across to something I know which moves more, uh, dollar yen to some extent, might not be nice. Uh, let's go with pound gen. This is the pair that I usually use this uh, trading technique on. And what I'm looking for is a very particular setup. Uh, on a 15 minute chart, after the market's moved 50 pips or more. And the particular setup I'm looking at is uh, for the market to make fresh highs, uh, but the RSI not to. This is called divergence on the RSI. And we're going to be looking here on the pound yen for this divergence setup. This one here, the market's made new lows, but the RSI also made new lows. It's not divergent. It's actually, uh, it's doing what the RSI should be doing. It's not showing any sort of running out of steam. This one, unfortunately, the new low. Well, this is a, this is not what we're looking for particularly, but this is uh, divergence. Just to just to be clear, um, the market the market made uh, fell around uh, 80 points, had a little bounce, had a second wave of selling, and that second wave of selling created a new uh, low in the market. But the RSI itself barely jumped below uh, 30. Okay, now. This is not clean, and I'll show you some clean ones in a second. Um, but what we're looking for, uh, this is actually another divergence to, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. Um, but we're looking for this to be happening, this dip, all below the 70 level, uh, sorry, the 30 level and above the 70 level. So you can, it doesn't matter which way it is, you'll get overbought and oversold opportunities all the time, at least once or twice a week. Uh, and when the setup is looking particularly right, uh, then you, you do get an opportunity to buy. Panion hasn't been behaving itself, it looks like there. We're back to July 16th and hasn't given a very clean signal. Usually it gives a lot of clean signals here. All right, here we go. So, market's dropping, and it's dropped uh, 80 points here. Okay, then it makes a new low, but the RSI ticks higher. Now, when this happens, okay, this is, um, and this market's moved to over 50 pips, then it's very likely the market's bottomed. And the theory goes that you have now five periods where you can be buying. Five periods that you can be buying, and uh, using once you see the market make a new low, but the uh, RSI tick higher, just like this one is, you buy at the end of this period at 15 minute closes, then you hold it for five periods and then you close your, your trade or you close it early if you get a nice pop and it's 10, 15 pips. Now this setup, um, if you wait for them properly, if you're waiting for these to happen at, at natural level uh, without pushing it and trying to you know sell every time it goes above uh, you know, 70 or below, below 30, waiting for the market to move at least 50 pips and uh, create that divergence. Uh, the probability of it working uh, to some extent is around about 70 to 80%. Uh, not every time do you make 10 pips or 20 pips. Sometimes you only make five pips. So, you know, it's a little bit deceiving to say you make, you, you're going to win 70% of the time. 
better way to say it, 80% of the time the market's going to stop dropping, okay, or stop rallying. It doesn't really say how much it's going to reverse, okay. And so that's the part which comes down to a little bit of uh, practice and um, you know knowing which pairs to to play. Why is the market moving? Um, but look, if you did it on every one, uh, then you know you should be looking at a lot of opportunities to make money. And the best thing about it, the stop loss when you do one of these RSI trades is going to be 10 pips or 15 pips max. If it keeps going low, it's invalidated the signal and you just get out. Okay, it shouldn't go more than 10 pips below the new low. Um, but let's try and find another one just so you can see uh, exactly what we're looking at there. Another key point is the market has to remain below 30, both of these signals, and has to remain above 70. Otherwise, it's not clean. So this one is here is a new low. And you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, the market may not, the RSI didn't, but this is not all, it's had a little trip above. Okay, this would be one. This little candle here. Uh, no. It's a bit, it's a bit borderline, too borderline. Okay. This little peak, lower than that one, where's the market at? Okay, so the little peak here is lower than the previous, but the market made a new high, and your plan is to sell for five periods max. Okay, so maximum one hour. And uh, this one, in, in you end up getting a lot of pips, but you're not pushing it, you're not making new things. Now, this one here, market made a new high, Right, but, um, and divergence is there, but the rally that caused this to get above is not 50 pips, it's only 30. So it's not, one of the one of the areas is not justified. Um, now, this one here is perfect. Uh, and if I was around uh, on this particular day, because we're talking about, uh, 1 a.m. Sydney time when this happened, and I'd saw uh, and I'd seen this, then um, that would really have got my attention just because of the fact that it remained underneath. Uh, I'd have to double check if the price exactly got low or not. Actually, got low on the second one, so that's a little less clean. It's not clean. But that's what you keep on looking for and you scan your charts and you're waiting to see that particular setup okay if you um if you see that particular setup then you you'd go through it and that's would that would be your potential entry system for a one hour trade one hour and 15 minutes is the maximum period that i would hold one of these trades uh, and you can use a five minute as well but um 15 minute allows you to have a one hour trade and that that would be what you're looking for All right, here, market's making a new high, and it's remained above 70, and it's gone 50 pips. That would be enough for me to enter. Ooh. Now this one is perfect, and in, in, if I was in real time, I would definitely buy this, and while you would have made money eventually, the next arrow was pretty, the next candlestick was pretty wild. It went down uh, 15 pips. That might have been one which un unfortunately stopped you out. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's not risk free. Uh, but in, in terms of, you know, did it end up, end up being near the bottom? Definitely, definitely. So that's the one that was a little bit borderline. It might have stopped me out that one. I didn't take it, but that's what I'm saying in hindsight. We're talking about hindsight trading anyway. This one. Didn't really make a new low. 
This one though is a bit closer to what I'm looking for. New low and the RSI is uh, still lower, higher than the previous one. Okay, um, that's the sort of thing I'm looking for uh, to enter and that's where I would be, um, that's the sort of signal I'd be buying there for five periods. Ended up getting a little choppy and ended up higher, but um, you, know, you didn't lose much. You probably would have made five pips in realistically, not stuck around. It's rally here. Didn't make a new high, unfortunately. The RSI divergence down here, uh, well, it's not divergence because it didn't make a new high, but this needed to make a new high, and that's the sell signal. All right, so we're going back in, and you're seeing so many of these um, work out. This one here uh, is a is pretty perfect. The market's moved a fair bit. And we've had uh, sort of capitulation, the push is below 30. And then, then the market has a little pause um, and they made a fresh low, making the RSI only go down a little bit compared to the original. And that's a buy signal. Okay. It works exactly the same on the top side. You know, this, uh, and in terms of how accurate it is, it's fairly accurate. Like it's, you've already seen, we've only had a sample size. I'm not just making that up. Everyone we've gone through has uh, has been showing some potential. Unfortunately, this one doesn't create the divergence. Although people will be looking at this and traders might take this, um, it's definitely not the, what you're looking for. You're looking for the mark tick lower. And so if this one had by chance opened a new high, then uh, that's what I'd be looking to sell. Otherwise, you just don't take it. When you have multiple uh, charts open, and so if I go and jump and pull across the uh, Euro Yen just quickly, right, you're definitely going to get a lot of opportunities on Euro Yen because it moves a lot. Check the, anytime you see a little peak and a little high. So this one, this one here is a bit borderline. It hasn't really moved enough at that point. Okay. Hasn't really moved enough. Um, and you have to be sort of strict on yourself because you get many opportunities to try and do a trade. And if you take every one, you're going to be overexposing. But you're looking for the perfectest opportunities you can. Um, this one's a borderline. It's about the same. 82. Uh, so actually, it's gone higher, so you can't take this one. But you'll get two to three uh, entries per week per pair. And uh, if you take the best ones, then you know, this is a great way of, of making five to, to 20 pips on a regular basis uh, if you're patient and you, you've learned a method. Because this will work on every sort of pair. And in particular, it works on pairs which move a lot. So Euro Aussie is one which moves a lot. and creates many opportunities for divergent trades. But you've got to follow the rules and make sure that the market uh, does go new highs. All right, so this is one where you wouldn't make any money, but you wouldn't lose anything. Sell here you might make couple of pips, maybe, maybe. And that, that will happen 20, 30% of the time. The market doesn't rebound much, but you don't lose anything. You just close it out. Maybe you lose one or two pips from the spread, depending on uh, if you, you get any sort of movement towards your direction. All right, see a divergence here. So you're looking at the candle where the market makes a new high. RSI hasn't made a new low. Has the market moved? Uh, 50 pips, yes it has. Um, uh, that would be a buy here and you'd be closing at some point in the next five candles. So one, two, three, four, five. So you would have had an opportunity to make, you know, five, six pips. So this is a, you know, a trading technique that was taught to me uh, by a trader and I, I've used it in the back of my head and I've always got it on my charts and I just wait until I see it there. And it didn't interfere, doesn't interfere with my other trading I'm doing. It's just a way of extra, making extra money 
uh, when you do see opportunities. And uh, every now and again, you're going to get some perfect entries when you're sitting around watching. So this one here, RSI's tick lower. Okay. Um, and so here would be a sell at the end of this candle. And it's moved 50 pips, the rules. So this is uh, where the market's making new lows and RSI is making new lows, so it's not really what you're looking for. Um, which is unfortunate. Okay. Market's dropped uh, 50 points, but the RSI has jumped up. So it's not really uh, what you're looking for. But hopefully, you know, and if you do want to have spend more time with me, if you're in Australia, give me a call during the day. I've taught multiple traders this method. Um, and for the first time, some of these traders are making money uh, just because they have something they can stick to, something they can practice, and something they can start to work around discipline. The uh, longer term theory trades that we talked about uh, well, things which are happening in, in the market right now and you're trying to make money from it, like the US dollar weakness, uh, those, those require a little bit more uh, attention. Yeah, and it's not so easy uh, when you are, you know, trading like that. Uh, so, you know, having a combination of both or um, you can also have your own little technical systems and if you get confluence uh, on these, so with your trading system gets an entry and the RSI also gives an entry, uh, you can use it. Now, the other big thing about this is um, uh, it's a very good exit system as well. So I bought the euro here willy-nilly. If I was to see the euro dollar rally now and create a divergence after moving on more than 50 pips, then you know I would be then getting out of this trade as as a normal day, like a, as a day trader, be my taking profit. Doesn't mean I have to go short, okay? But a lot of people have no trouble getting into trades. It's when they're exiting trades that they they mess up, and so this is one way which I would be exiting as well, using the divergence as an exit strategy. Uh, from your trend following trades because it's a good time to get out. Now, you don't want to stick around after you see one of these divergences. At least for the next hour, it's going to be going down against you. So you know, that's that's another thing that it's used for. And that's probably, um, if you do have an, your own trading method system, that's probably one of the ways it's going to help you more. If you don't want to be scalping and doing counter trend trades and you're doing trend trades, just keep an eye on this. So if the market's oversold, if it gets divergence, get out. Uh, if the market's overbought and you get divergence, get out. I do have this as a YouTube uh, tutorial as well. Um, not this particular rant I've just given there, but as a, uh, a different sort of setup where it just focus on the RSI. So if you do want a copy of that, just send me an email and uh, I'll put you in. In terms of um, my email and in chat, I'll just type it in there, tonyd at easymarkets.com. But look, I'm open for questions as well. I can go over any pair that you're looking for. Um, I didn't really cover the uh, the pound because I don't want to get excited on the pound just yet, but it's definitely starting to behave as if that 130 was the bottom and there's a potential here for this to uh, to rally now and the Brexit negotiations have been going on for a while. May's just taking control of them. You, Irish uh, foreign minister likes the new, um, uh, well potentially likes the new border deal. Germany and a lot of the, there's not as much negativity towards this new white paper as uh, have been to previous suggestions from Britain. I think uh, Europe's starting to understand that if they say no to this deal, then the chances of a no deal in general um, a hard Brexit coming through uh, become greater and that will create some downside uh, on the European economy, which is uh, potentially at the moment um, you know, going through trade issues with America. They don't need more to, to derail sentiment. So, you know, Britain's been through a fair bit. I'm pretty optimistic they're going to get a deal, um, but I've been wrong on that for the last two months because I've been thinking they're going to get a deal for the last two months and it has been dragging on. So I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch here. 
Um, but the reason why I'm even looking at the pound so closely is because once they do have a deal uh, and they made traction on a deal, what happened earlier in the year was my first big trade of the year. Um, and that was in January. And that was uh, around uh, 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 500 pips. And so that's sitting in the back of my mind and you could easily get 500 pips from this pound if you get a deal uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, or traction towards a deal. And so that's something I'm, I'm always looking for now um, as the market starts to behave more bullishly. Yeah. And there's also a natural exhaustion from the US dollar failing uh, and a little bit of positive news regarding the Brexit, let, let alone the chances of the Bank of England raising rates. You know, there's many reasons to be looking constructively at the pound. Um, but let's not get too excited yet. We haven't even broken that downtrend line and we haven't broken 133. So next month I will give the update. And uh, if you ever do see the pound uh, sharply rally, don't hesitate to give me and send me an email or give me a call during my uh, session and we can talk about it uh, because potentially if there's a big rally in a day, like 200 pips, 300 pips, then obviously something positive has happened. Um, but since this can end up being a thousand pip move, we have to talk about uh, getting in on the trade even after it's moved uh, so quickly um, because uh, once you get a deal here, the pound's probably not going lower again uh, from these levels. And this will be the low for the next couple of decades potentially. It's like the Aussie at 55 cents wants to, you know, trying to have a trade deal with, uh, I don't know, whatever, make-believe land that, that we had. Um, once you got the deal, you know, 50 cents is pretty low for the Aussie. And that's the same way to view it. It's a once in a decade sort of opportunity uh, to start building up a long position. All right, guys. Look, that's enough for today. Um, but if any questions, please let me know because I'm, uh, I don't mind at all uh, looking at particular pairs. All right, guys. I'll take that as uh, everyone's good. Um, all right. Well, I'll look, I'll be back next month and we'll be going over a few more uh, what's been happening in the market since then. We'll see if the Bank of England raises rates. We'll see if there's a trade deal done. We'll see if there's any traction with the US and China. Uh, remember, the new tariffs come in on China uh, at the end of uh, August. So, uh, we'll see if they, they've actually started talking. They're not even talking right now. They're not even talking. So there's potential for some very large moves uh, one way or the other, both positive and negative here, uh, given that um, things get, get a lot better, but things can get certainly get a lot worse for the, for the world. All right, guys, best of luck. Thanks for coming.